under band guys and of course we're going to be using trading view here for today's video again trading view is completely free to use and i'm going to be using the chart for apple ticker symbol aapl and we're going to be taking a look at the daily chart so the very first thing that i want to do here guys is show you where you would go ahead and find this and how you would add it to your chart so the very first thing that we want to do here is we want to go all the way to the top and you want to go to this indicators tab so go ahead and click on this indicators tab and then here we can search for any indicators metrics or strategies that we want so let's go ahead and type in b-o-l-l -L. and so just by typing that under technicals you should see bollinger bands right here uh, so you want to click the one that doesn't have any of this extra stuff so this one right here so click on it once and then go ahead and close out of this window that should have added it to your chart as you can see here so before i tell you what all of this means i'd like to go ahead and introduce today's sponsor guys mumu so right now you can get five free stocks valued up to twelve thousand five hundred dollars plus an additional five free stocks with any deposit mumu is a commission-free online trading platform that allows you to invest in stocks etfs options and adrs now mumu also offers a comprehensive stock screener guys and allows you to track institutional buys and holds and my favorite feature is that allows you to track and unlock 24 7 premium news for free which gives you access to real-time news from leading financial media and also access to an all-in-one market calendar of key events guys so check out mumu again i'll put a link to them in the description below so let's get right into this video here let's talk about what these bollinger bands are so bollinger bands are a technical analysis tool defined by a set of trend lines the blue lines here are the trend lines that i'm talking about and these are plotted two standard deviations away from a simple moving average so this orange line that you see here is a simple moving average and to be more specific it's the 20 day simple moving average so remember the way that works is it looks at the last 20 prices for the stock it finds the average and it plots it here and forms this line so remember we can always go into the settings here for this tool and we can take a look at what the defaults are so length is 20 again this is the 20 simple moving average that's the orange line that you see here in the middle and then the the actual bollinger bands which are the blue lines here again are plotted two standard deviations away from the simple moving average now again you can modify these defaults but most of the time you're going to want to use the defaults or it could change you know how these things work so anyways let's go ahead and click on ok here now because the distance of the bands is based on standard deviation when the market becomes more volatile the bands will widen and get farther away from each other like you see here so why did this happen because look at apple look at this huge price action that it had it became very volatile there was more volatility and so the bands became uh you know they got further away from each other now on the other hand during low volatile periods these bands will contract and they will get a lot closer to each other so notice here right apple was basically trading sideways it wasn't really moving at all and so what happened the bands got very close to each other meaning that there was a very low volatility during this period here now approximately 90 percent of all price action is going to occur between these two bands and we can see that just by looking at this chart how many times does the price of apple actually go outside these bands not that often right maybe we see a few times here a couple times here one very special case here and then a couple of times here but for the most part you can see that the price of apple stays within these bands right so 90 percent of price action will occur between these two bands and so prices here have a tendency to bounce within the band's envelope and so basically what you will see is that they will bounce from one band 
to the other band. So they will go from the top band and eventually they will make their way all the way down to the bottom band. And then again, they'll have a tendency to eventually bounce back up to the top band and eventually bounce back down to the bottom band. So one way uh, that a lot of traders will use this is that they will use this when they're swing trading or day trading or whatever it might be to help them identify potential profit targets. And that's a very common question that I get asked all the time, right? Is how do I know when I should take my profits? How do I know when I should close out of my position? This is something that traders use to potentially know when to close. So for example, let's say you're a trader and you entered a long position in Apple right here when it was at this bottom band, right? Let's say you, for some reason, thought it was gonna go up, you entered a position. So your question is gonna be, well, when do I know to take my profit? And so a lot of the time where people or traders are gonna take their profit is gonna be when it hits the simple moving average, right, this orange line. So if you would have entered a long position here, your first pro profit target might have been at the simple moving average. So when it touched it here, when it hit it here, this would have been a t good time potentially to go ahead and take your profits. A lot of the time as well, uh, a trader's profit target may be the upper band because as we just discussed, there's a tendency for the price to move from one band to the other. So for example, if you would have entered a long position here, maybe your first profit target would have been the simple moving average, your second profit target might have been the upper band, right? So when it finally touched the upper band here, you might have been, okay, it touched the upper band. Now we can go ahead and take the rest of the profit. So that's kind of one way that traders use this here as well to kind of set their profit targets. Now, I do wanna talk about this here because this is a very important thing. I wanna talk about the most common mistake that traders make when using Bollinger Bands, okay? So here is the mistake. Please don't believe that the price hitting or exceeding one of the bands is a signal to buy or sell. So let us take a look, for example, at May 5th. So May 5th is right here. So notice what happened with Apple stock. Apple stock basically touched the lower band here. And so people have a tendency to kind of mistake in these bands as a signal for overbought and oversold. So sometimes people might believe that if it touches this bottom band, that the stock is oversold and that they should go ahead and buy. Now notice what would have happened if you would have done that, right? So notice here again, it touched the lower band. So if you would have thought, okay, it touched the lower band, it is oversold, I need to go ahead and buy or go long or whatever, what would have happened? You would have lost quite a bit of money, right? Because the stock continued to travel down further, right? So that's another tendency uh, of the Bollinger Band is that the price can definitely hug the top or bottom band for quite some time without, you know, bouncing back up or bouncing down. So that's what we see here, right? Don't confuse the fact that it touched the bottom band as a, you know, potential oversold signal right? That's not the case. And so similarly on the other side, right? Please don't confuse that if the price touches the upper band that it has become overbought because again, it's just not always going to be true. And we can see that here as well. So let's say that you believe if it touches the over or, or the top band here that it has been overbought and that you should short it or buy a put or enter a bearish strategy. So notice here, it touched the upper band. But what happened? What would have happened if you would have shorted it or bought or put? Well, notice the price continued to go ahead, to head up even higher, right? So you again, you would have lost money here. So again, please don't confuse the idea that just because it touches the lower band, it's oversold, or because it touches the upper band, it's overbought. Now you should also, beyond that, uh, know the, know this idea, right? The idea that this is a 20 simple moving average we can use this to determine what the trend is here, right? So when it comes to using the 20 day simple moving average, it's gonna tell us more about what the shorter term trend is. And so notice here, right? For example, here, the 20 day simple moving average is sloping upwards. So are the Bollinger Bands, right? They're all sloping upwards. This is an indication that during this time, Apple was in a short term uptrend. So when you're in an uptrend, remember the trend is your friend, you don't wanna trade against the trend. So if you were in an uptrend here, 
you probably didn't want to short the stock. You probably didn't want to go short, buy puts, you know, enter any bearish strategy. So that would have been another reason to not have bought or, or not have sold, sorry, when it touched the upper band here as well. Similarly, over here, we take a look at the 20-day simple moving average. It's sloping downward, and so are the Bollinger Bands. So again, that's a you know that can let us know that during this time period, Apple was in a short-term downtrend. And so again, since the trend is your friend, you don't want to trade against the trend. You probably didn't want to buy or go long during this time period. And so that would have been another reason not to have bought over here, even though it touched the lower band. Even though people like to think that because it touched the lower band that it's oversold. You know, just knowing the fact that, hey, look, we're in a downtrend here, you probably don't want to go long, could have definitely helped you out there, right? Now, also keep in mind that the simple moving average, which again, this is the 20 day simple moving average, this orange line, a lot of the time serves as an area of support and resistance. And we see this here multiple times, right? So we see it, uh, for example, here, right? When the price came back down, guess what? It touched the simple moving average before bouncing back up. So it acted as an area of support. Over here, it acted an area as an area of resistance, resistance here as well. Look at here, multiple times it touched it. Again, it acted as an area of uh, resistance here. Uh, so, you know, you can always, you can also use this simple moving average to kind of detect where it might potentially bounce off of, because again, it, a lot of the times will act as an area of support and resistance. Now, there is one very popular strategy a lot of people like to use with Bollinger Bands, uh, but it's going to take quite a bit to explain. So I'm going to make a separate video on that in the future, guys. But for now, hopefully everything that I've mentioned and talked about here in today's video can help you out and hopefully this adds value to your trading. So anyways, if you guys have any questions about anything I just talked about, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Check out the Discord, link to it in the description below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think. Now I'll see you guys next time.